ladies and gentlemen, flash photography is not permitted during tournament competition. Broadway, we are ready to begin competition. And there you have it, folks. We are underway. Welcome back to Bowl TV. Thanks so much for your patience out there in the chat room. We've got a couple of great teams for you today, live from the 2015 USBC Open Championships here in El Paso, Texas. This is Matt Canizaro minus Aaron Smith on this fine afternoon. We are behind lanes 39 and 40. We're here to see last year's regular team runner-up Motion Plus Lanes and a top contender each year. Made a run at the title back in 2011. Southern Storm. So we'll have the lineups for you in just a minute. Again, just getting underway here with game number one of three. And first up was Jeff Nimke with a little bit of bad luck with the 710 to start things off. I have no doubt it won't take these guys long to find their stride here at the El Paso Convention Center. So thanks for joining us, sit tight. And we'll have three good games for you coming here right up on Bowl TV. All right, a quick look at the lineups for today's two teams here on Bowl TV. Again, Southern Storm, the regular team runner-up in 2011. And Motion Plus Lanes, last year's runner-up in Reno. And for Southern Storm, Rich Abood making his 29th tournament appearance, followed by Jace Peterson at 32 years. Ryan Brazil. Tournament number 39, Brian had a 300 game back in singles in 1999. And there are two Eagle winners on this team, John Sosa, the first bowler in tournament history with two 800 series at the Open Championships. He's the 1997 singles champ with 847. Came back the next year to take home a team title in 1998. Also was a 2008 regular doubles champ with Dennis Rakoskis, that was in Albuquerque. John is making his 26th tournament appearance, followed by Rakoskis, joining us for the 31st year. Motion Plus Lanes, led by the veteran Jeff Nimke, the 1993 regular all events champ and a team champ in 1998. Last year, these guys came together to shoot 35-61. At the time, it was the highest score in tournament history. And they ended up in second place after Artistic Expressions 1 came in and shot 37-20 to take home the title. So 35-61, still the second highest score in 112 years at the Open Championships. The veteran Nimke leading away in his 34th event. Last year, he was injured, had a hurt back. Still gutted out. A 628 series in the team event. So looking forward to seeing him at 100% today. He's followed by 
Chris Pearson, a former Junior Team USA member, a solid talent out of Walkershaw, Wisconsin. Career average through five events here, 216.2. Bowling third today, Chad Kloss rolled a 300 game in the 2013 team event, helped these guys to a fifth place finish at 34.99. So the last two years, 34.99 and 35.61. Pretty solid effort, and I would expect, again, nothing less than big numbers here in 2015. Jack Kloss also was the 05-06 PBA Midwest Region Rookie of the Year. And bowling fourth, Chad Moss making his 15th tournament appearance, also over 216 career average. And finally, Dave Barris, a former exempt player on the PBA Tour, Bowling for the 16th time, the Wizard of Waukesha, 2013 PBA Midwest Player of the Year. And he also is close to the 219 mark for his 15 years here. So these guys, very talented and very well communicating team. So we should see a lot of chatter over the next three games. Both of these groups have the potential to make a run here. Right now, the top spot on the leaderboard occupied by Junior Team USA Support 1, 33.59. That is a sizable number this year's conditions, proving to be extremely challenging. If you take a look at those, or if you'd like to take a look at those lane conditions, you can visit bowl.com slash openchamp, and you'll see the graphs there. Uh, the link in the right-hand menu a lot of other great information on that page as well. So check that out if you have any questions. Feel free to let us know. So we've had a few changes in the leaderboard this week. And right now, 10th place, simply plus 10. 3,010 is the final spot on the leaderboard right now. So far this week, we saw hashtag Team Dole make a run and Move into second place at 32.31, followed by Bowling with Leverage Pro Shop, 32.11. And then last night, Steve Klumpkin, David Haynes, they made a run and uh, fell a little bit short in the final frames. Moved into fourth place at 31.78. And our first big number of the year, 31.49, currently fifth in the standings. So it's been a, a high scoring week here in the team event. And a lot of possibilities, some terrific teams here on this squad. On the other side of the venue, we have 2009 Masters champ, John Nolan. So we'll keep an eye on the other lanes across the venue as we settle in here. Appreciate everybody joining us. It is going to be a one-man show indefinitely today. Uh, we do have some great bowlers in the stands as well, so if we can possibly get some of them on. Uh, that would be more than entertaining, I'm sure. We've got Ted Pritz and Anthony Lavery Spar from the defending team champions. Pete Thomas here as well, he's the anchor bowler. after motion plus lanes came in and, and set the bar at 3561. Everybody wondered if 3600 was possible. These guys left a little bit on the lanes in the final frame last year. And uh, still to this day, no 3600 has been bowled at the Open Championships, of course. Artistic Expressions took home the title with 3720. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Again, the numbers in the chat room certainly blew up here as we got underway. And thank you all for sharing a part of your Friday afternoon with us.
Tyrone Burks taking some time away from the Open Championships venue to catch a live stream. Chris Hans, you're going to see him and his teammates very soon. And, of course, the Waz checking in from the Bowler Show. And we'll talk to him on Sunday, give him a recap of this week's events. We had ourselves a 50-year gentleman celebrating five decades at the Open Championships and some top teams. So a little bit of everything and much more to come. So again, if you are just joining us, we are at the start of game number one of today's 5 p.m. team event. We're here to see Motion Plus Lanes, the 2014 regular team runner-up. And a bonus, we get Southern Storm, the runner-up in 2011. And it took the highest game at the time in tournament history to beat them. Jeff Briggles and crew shot 12.81 in their finale and it took home the title. So Brian Brazil always in contention and still looking for that first eagle here at the Open Championships. So the number they're chasing, 33.59. Just over 3,000 will get them in the top 10. So that shows you how challenging this year's team lane pattern is. And as we have done since 2013, two different lane conditions here at the Open Championships. So we've got one for the team event, of course. And another challenge for you in doubles and singles. You can find those details on bull.com. The team pattern, 38 feet. 26.9 mils. Doubles and singles pattern a foot longer and 27.05. So you see Chad Kloss up on lane 40 with the open frame and he is nursing a serious arm tendon bicep injury. And that certainly could be a factor here in today's team event. Felt confident that he'd be ready to go for today's three games. So we will see how that affects him along the way. Chatted with them a little bit recently. And again, chatted with the arm injury. Nimke with the hurt back last year. Uh, these guys already a dangerous, dangerous team. And to see them come in one year at 100% uh, would be a scary thing for the rest of our teams. So we've got standing room only up here in the bleachers. Some terrific bowlers again. Kerry Painter, a top senior player. Stopping through El Paso, looking to bowl in this year's Open Championships. Our highest opening game of the year, 1070. That was by Junior Team USA support on the way to the top spot. And a couple of solid teams this week. Hashtag Team Dole, 1039 in the opener. And bowling with Leverage Pro Shop, 1056. And we've seen some big finishes as well. ND Storm. At 12.23 after games of 9.39 and 9.87. So a 
certainly is possible to open the lanes up and make them nice for game three. But the trick, of course, is getting out of the gate strong as well and not giving any pins away. And Nimke with a nice break for the three-bagger. Started this game with a 7-10, and both the 7 and the 10 go simultaneously on lane 39. If you have any questions today, feel free to drop those into the chat room. If somebody else doesn't answer them first, I'll be glad to provide what information I can from my vantage point here. High atop the bleachers at the El Paso Convention Center. Behind lanes 39 and 40. And first strike of 2015 for Kloss. As you can see, a lot of communication and something these guys do very well and often they do have the benefit of coming from the same location so they can practice together and come up with their game plan. They also bowl state tournament together and have had considerable success. If you are curious about the live stream schedule, you can visit bowl.com slash live stream. Or if you are particularly interested in seeing some coverage from the USBC Open and Women's Championships, you can visit the Open Championships page on bowl.com and click on the information tab. And that will show you what is coming up on the schedule. There's a link to the live stream schedule just for these two events. Again, this year's team lane condition, 38 feet, and you can find those details on bowl.com. There's a graph even, so if any of that even makes sense to you, give it a look. We did not get a chance to talk game plan with these guys prior to competition. We'll let their bowling say everything about their strategy. And we will focus on the facts and figures, get you the scores, and direct you to any information. Uh, so far, a few of the shots we've seen, some of the guys towards the outside part of the lane early. And we'll see how that changes as these three games progress. I'm 
surrounded by Boeing's Elite right now to my left. My former doubles partner, PBA champion Kent Wagner, taking a minute out of the scale room to watch these top teams. Again, members of the defending team champion, Artistic Expressions 1, Anthony Lavery Spar, Ted Pritz, and Pete Thomas looking on, as well as tournament manager Dwayne Hagen. This year's tournament kicked off March 7th. And we will have 128 consecutive days of competition, concluding July 12th. And as we get here towards the middle of April, they're going to be jam-packed the rest of the way. And many, many great teams headed to the Sun City between now and July. live stream broadcast from the 2015 USBC Open Championships will be the defending champs April 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Pete Thomas and crew take to the lanes here at the El Paso Convention Center. And the very next day, former Team USA member Derek Oaf, he won the World Cup in 2008, will see his doubles and singles live on Bull TV at 3 p.m. Eastern. Crowd continues to grow. Chris Shipman checking in. Steve Bone. Surrounded by right handers here, Steve, so thanks for joining us. The inquisitive Ryan Burks stopping by. He will be my teammate here at the Open Championships this year in late June. Had a couple great broadcasts so far this year. Last time we had the cameras out, we saw Junior Team USA support shoot a big, big number for Team All Events. They had taken the lead in Team Event the night before, 33-59. And by virtue of having the defending regular All Events champ on the team, found themselves on Bowl TV for the second consecutive year. Last year it was because they were the defending Team All Events winners. And they bowled very well, averaged 225 almost as a group, and shot 10,064. So they hit the 10,000 mark in Team All Events for the third consecutive year live on Bowl TV. And second place right now is at 93.93, so almost 700 pins better than the previous leader. And Anthony Lacaz now in position to become the second bowler in history to win titles in three straight years. We'll see, a long way to go, a lot of great teams coming our way. But 10,064, a sizable number. One that many thought would not be seen this year. These two challenging conditions and those guys proved everybody wrong. But will it be enough? We'll see. Just barely a month into this year's event.
So, so far, just looking at the top ten, being around the thousand mark in game one will be a solid start here in 2015. Two-time champ Jeff Nimke leading the way for Motion Plus Lanes right now. Working on a four-bagger that comes after a 7-10 in the opening frame. Four in a row for Nimke. Saw him in the hallway earlier. Very glad to be back healthy and 100%. Dave Bears. Clean through five. We're at the halfway point of game number one already. We're cruising along. So these guys just just getting comfortable. Back in 2013, at the time known as Red Carpet Lanes, these five Motion Plus guys got together, close strong with 1272 and 3499 on the way to a fifth place finish. Continued that momentum in 2014. Put together games of 1269, 1177, and 1115 for 3561. Again, they left some pins out there in the 10th frame. But Artistic Expressions 1 of Oklahoma City blew past them 3720 to claim the title. Pearson and Kloss still talking strategy. This year we're pulling on Kegel Ice Oil. So Kegel Ice debuted in 2013. Designed to hold up a little bit longer, transition a little less. Just adding another layer to the challenge that is the Open Championships. Here's Brian Brazil up on lane 40. Top senior player. Hails from Ocala, Florida. And despite a terrific career, that Orange Eagle has eluded him for 38 years. A couple close calls. Most recent coming in 2011, finishing second in the team event to Jeff Riggles in the Turbo 2-in-1 team.
a very relevant question in the chat room from Mr. Shipman. Who's in the booth tonight? Well, right now it's a one-man show. Mr. Smith on the road in Reno. Today's opening day at the USBC Women's Championships and the new USBC Mix. So a lot happening at the National Bowling Stadium. We'll have a recap of that for you on Bowl.com later tonight. But ladies, still plenty of time to enter. If you'd like to head to Reno and compete in the Women's Championships, bring along the guys and Bull in the mix as well, making its debut at the NBS this year. Both events will run from April 10th until June 30th. And if you enjoy some time in Las Vegas, both of those tournaments headed to Sin City in 2016. Registration for the Women's Championships actually open today. So you can visit bull.com and get registered for the 2016 Women's Championships. If you're bowling in 2015, good news. Your dates and times are guaranteed for 60 days. So you can get the exact same time and date for next year. And registration for the mixed will be open soon. But two great opportunities to compete in Las Vegas at the new South Point Bowling Plaza coming up in 2016. And the Open Championships, of course, headed back to the National Bowling Stadium for one more run. Registration for next year's OC also available on bowl.com. Smith joining us in the chat room. He's here in spirit, but many miles away. Rolling along here at the El Paso Convention Center. A few holes on the board for Southern Storm and Motion Plus Lanes. 33.59 is the number on top of the standings. And every little bit will help in sizzling away at the enormous Team All Events number of 10,064 posted by Junior Team USA Support.
a little challenging to see what these guys are throwing from our vantage point. Some a little more obvious than others, but feel free to reach out to them and see if they're willing to give up some of their strategy. I bet not. Big strike there. By Barris. Still clean through seven. If I was going to roll through the Midwest, the Milwaukee area, and pick five or seven players to put on a team, these guys certainly all would be in the top ten. Very accomplished individually. Now looking to break through here on the big stage. A couple of top five finishes for Motion Plus lanes in the last two years. They've also been in contention for team all events in the recent past. And of course, Southern Storm includes three-time Eagle winner, John Sosa and doubles champ, Dennis Rakoskis. John also from the Milwaukee area. Chris Hans giving us a little bit of trivia in the chat room. How many USBC bowlers have bowled every score between 290 and 300? There's at least one. We talked about him earlier.
Yes, Mr. Hans, I am aware. Not something that we track at USBC, but one that has come up in many discussions and can be verified. Joined in the bleachers here, Steve Clumpkin and Marsha Clumpkin from Utah. Steve, of course, a driving force at Storm Products. One of our gold partners here at the Open Championships. We want to thank Columbia 300, Hammer, Kegel, and Storm for all of their great support at this year's Open and Women's Championships. Night frame here, game number one, Motion Plus Lanes and Southern Storm. Trying to track down Junior Team USA Support 1. And it's 33.59 total. Glad to have everybody with us tonight. This is Matt Canizaro and Aaron Smith from a distance in Reno right now at the opening ceremonies of the 2015 Women's Championships. If you'd like to find Mr. Smith, you can track him down on Twitter, at USBC Aaron. You can find me on there as well, at USBC Matt, or on Facebook, Matt Canizaro USBC. We also have an official Open and Women's Championships Facebook page where we put a lot of great information, often the news that's not quite news, but still interesting. I'd like to share it on there and let everybody know it's what's what here at the Open Championships. And now we'll have some news coming from the WC in Reno, so keep an eye out for that. Here's Chad Moss up on lane 40, looking for four in a row here. And he delivers. Chad with 717 in last year's team event. Kloss. Led the way with 762, followed by Chris Pearson, 756. Moss had 717. Dave Bear, 698. And Jeff Nimke, 628. On the way to the runner up finish with 35 at 61. Now the second highest score in tournament history. It won't take quite that much to get to the top spot this year. But these guys definitely still have a lot of work to do as. Nipke gets ready to start off the 10th frame of game number one.
so Southern Storm, 10th frame about to get underway. Rich Abood. Having a, a rough back half of game number one here. So 10th frame not going well for Southern Storm. A pair of opens to start. But Brian Brazo trying to reel it back in. Four in a row looking to make it five. And that one jumps off the spot. Three, six, seven, ten. Good chatter in the chat room about the opening women's championships and where they go and why. 2013 and 14, the first opportunities we've had to have the two events in the same host city in the same year just uh, worked out that we had the venues available. Of course, the Open Championships was at the National Bowling Stadium. The women's championships at 44 lanes inside the Reno Sparks Convention Center. Not a lot of cities will afford that opportunity. And also both events uh, kind of have their own personalities and traditions and we want to keep those. And give interested cities a chance to have one or both. It's certainly out there. It's not out of the realm of possibility. But uh, we can only go to cities that want to have us. And there certainly is a lot involved in how much time and space we need especially with the schedule for both events for the coming years available on bowl.com Reno and the National Bowling Stadium always will be in the mix and now 
Las Vegas getting in on the action with South Point Bowling Plaza, 60 lane bowling facility permanently set up as part of the South Point property. So we'll spend some time there. And then we'll be on the road. Open Championships will head to Syracuse in 2018. Women's Championships going to Baton Rouge in 2017. Wichita in 2019 and Mobile in 2021. So we're pretty much booked out now through 2026 with the exception of one year for each event with the goal being to head east if possible. But again, need to find cities that are interested and able to become part of bowling history. Now we'll turn our attention back to the scoreboard. Brian Brzeau finishes with 206. Chad Moss with the split in the 10th frame on the four bagger. Finishes with 212 for motion plus lane. So definitely going to have a lot of work to do in games two and three. Somebody asked about the extent of Chad Kloss's injury. And uh, all I can tell you is that I know it is very painful. He was able to bowl a state tournament recently, however, and bowled well. So I was feeling good uh, about the possibilities of a, another solid performance here at the Open Championships. Again, uh, might just take a minute or two to get loosened up and ready to go. But these guys are true competitors. And there's no doubt that he would have stepped aside if it was serious enough. That's what a team player would do. And having known Chad for 10 years, uh, no doubt. All right, so game one in the books, 9.54 for Southern Storm, 9.77 for Motion Plus Lanes. Number on top, 33.59. So 9.77, not a bad start. 9.54, not too bad either. Actually, both scores beat all teams in the top 10 from 4th to 10th place. So the top three teams all bowled well over 1,000. But the next highest game in the top 10 in the opener, 9.52. So both teams 
still in the hunt for a spot in the top 10. It will only take plus 10 to get there. Discussion about the equipment for these gentlemen. Uh, Dave Barris is a Brunswick guy for sure. Chad Kloss recently with Motive. Chad Moss wearing the DVA logo. Not sure the affiliation there. Chris Pearson, big Storm fan. Brad Littlejohn, question about announcements. Not sure uh, exactly what you mean, but uh, if you'd like to clarify, I'd be glad to offer what I can. Got an off-air message from USBC Hall of Famer John Gaines. John, thanks for the uh, thanks for the laugh. We'll see John's group, Lodge Lanes and Company, early in June. Answer Brad's question in the chat room about the announcements. Uh, each squad, as we get ready for the team to come out, everybody assembles in the squad room, and that is where we recognize all of our past champions, celebrities, uh, participation awards. Everybody uh, starting at 20 years gets an award here at the Open Championships. Plaques begin at 25 years, uh, and for some of these gentlemen, uh, John Sosha, for example. Uh, the announcements can be quite lengthy with all of the success and dedication that they have here at the event. So, John, three Eagles, a couple 800s, uh, and more than 25 years. Uh, so you add that to other successful teammates. And then, of course, this squad, nearly wall-to-wall, -wall, we're 3-52 to 52 right now. So uh, a lot of players and a lot of recognition. And uh, sometimes that goes a little bit long. And then once they get out to the lanes, some of our celebrities also are recognized for the crowd. So all part of the process, the experience here at the Open Championships, the march down center aisle, a significant tradition here at the tournament. And to get your name on the announcements, often a goal for most of our players.
We have a lot of great live streams coming up from the Open and Women's Championships this year. The schedule can be found at bowl.com slash openchamp under the information tab. Coming up next on April 14th, defending team champion Artistic Expressions won. Those guys in the building right now taking a look at these top teams. Ted Pritz, Anthony Lavery Spar, Pete Thomas, Jimmy McMartin, and Zeno Garcia. Again, that's April 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern. They shot 37-20 last year to take home the team title. Looking to make it back-to-back -back wins here in El Paso. And the very next day, former Team USA member Derek Oaf. We haven't had a chance to see him on Bowl TV before. And a very accomplished group of former University of Nebraska standouts with quite a list of accomplishments, whether it be here at the Open Championships, collegiately, or as members of Team USA and Junior Team USA. So looking forward to those two broadcasts. That one will be April 15th at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's our 1 p.m. doubles and single squad here in El Paso. And somebody did ask about John Gaines and the Lodge Lanes crew. They will be here June 9th and 10th. And we'll have that talented group back on Bowl TV for their team event on June 9th. Nice crowd on hand today, both in person and online. More than 500 watching on Bolt TV. Thanks for joining us. This is Matt Canizaro minus Aaron Smith here at the 2015 USBC Open Championships. You get to listen to the sweet sounds of Matt Canizaro for 30 plus hours as we watch Motion Plus Lanes and Southern Storm. Working on getting a couple guests in the booth if possible. Uh, most of the folks watching intently on what's happening on the tournament lanes here. Moving in and out of the bleachers. While we have this opportunity, game two just getting underway. Take a look at the leaderboards again in the team event. Junior Team USA support one on top, 33-59. But to make the top 10 right now, only plus 10. So just over 3,000 will get you on the leaderboard and get you a nice payday, I'm sure. And looking at regular doubles, Tom Woodworth and Jeremy Sonnefeld have been at the top for almost the entire event. They bowled early. We kicked things off here March 7th, and they're holding steady at 1372. James Hansen and Ron Moore gave it a run just a couple days ago and came up short uh, in the 10th frame. Ron Moore needed a double, would have got him there. He left an eight pin on his second shot. Hansen got eight on his fill ball. Ron Moore missed the spare, ended up with 13.72 pins back. Earlier today, Steve Klompkin and David Haynes had a good effort. Shot 13.11, moved into the top five as well. In the singles event, Chad Oaks, he owns the lone perfect game at this year's tournament. And 
he bowled that. First game of singles. Started with 17 in a row, went on to shoot 300, 253, and 219 for 772. Matthew Tuckfield, part of Junior Team USA Support 1, had a chance at it. Shot 771 with a missed three pin early in game three. So that was the difference for him. Uh, to make the top 10 right now, a tie for 10th place with 719. in regular all events. Eric Vermilia led the way for Junior Team USA Support 1. 2083. He's having a fantastic career here at the Open Championships. Averaging well over 220 for just over a decade. Matthew Tuckfield in third place. Anthony Lacaz, the defending champ, in sixth place. Steve Novak, also a member of that team, in eighth place. So when you have four of the top ten, that is a pretty spectacular performance, and all of that helped them to a 10,064 total in Team All Events, looking to capture their second title in three years in that event. Almost 700 pins ahead of their previous leader. So quite a performance. Give you a quick rundown of game number one. If I can find where I wrote that down. All right, here we go. For Southern Storm, Rich Abood, 147. Jace Peterson, 209. Brian Brzeau, 206. John Sosha, 178. And Dennis Rakoskis, 194 for 954. Not a bad start. Looking at the rest of the teams in the top 10. And for Motion Plus Lanes, Jeff Nimke, 197. He's back to 100% after a back injury in 2014. Chris Pearson, former Junior Team USA member, 192. Chad Kloss, 188. Chad Moss, 212, with an open in the 10th. And Dave Barris, 188 for 977. That is the fourth highest opening game in the top 10 right now. So not a bad pace, but certainly going to need to turn things up here as we roll on.
All right, folks, all of your wishes have been answered. I got some uh, some company up here in the booth. We're joined by Pete Thomas, as they just call him, Pete. And uh, he was the anchor bowler on last year's team champion, Artistic Expressions 1, 37-20, phenomenal score, the highest in 112 years of Open Championships history. And right now, they are watching closely the team that they surpassed, Motion Plus Lanes. Pete, how are you today? Ah, uh, doing good, Matt. Doing good. Glad to be here. Uh, yeah, we're 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 getting a, a bird's eye view here. We wanted to get a good look at how uh, Motion Plus plays the lanes, and uh, we're excited about what we're seeing. Um, I know it looks tough, but it it also looks like we have a chance, you know, to make a make a difference. All right. Well, again, you guys made history with the big score last year. Certainly, uh, some fame that came with that, and some attention. Uh, a lot of chatter uh, when it happened and of course when that score held on to win what has the last year been like for you guys as the the defending champions now coming in you know it's been awesome um, the one thing that uh, we've always wanted to do was just to make sure that we represented uh, the sport of bowling uh, you know and, and let everybody know that that uh, what we shot was was something that was special and it was team chemistry and uh, you know the Lord just blessed us that, you know, we, we did everything right and uh, things fell into place. And it's been uh, people just been congratulating, congratulating us left and right. And uh, we can't say thank you enough uh, to the people that have been supporting us. Well, uh, the preparation, I'm sure, has uh, has been ongoing. Uh, certainly a tall task coming in as the defending champs, a lot surrounding being last year's winners, uh, there's going to be some some accolades and, and a lot of extra attention when you guys are ready to bowl on April 14th. You're going to have a presentation. And, of course, the moment when you turn around and see those eagles on the scoreboard for the first time, uh, can you anticipate at all what you think that's going to feel like and be like? You know, that's the, that, that's the one wild card, I think, as far as our performance this year is concerned. Um, you know, how we handle the nerves, how we handle the expectations, how we handle all of that. Uh, it's going to be exciting and rewarding. And um, the one thing I'm going to try to stress with my teammates is that uh, once the ceremony ends, work, our work begins. Well, and I think that's uh, one of the biggest challenges, uh, besides, of course, having the bullseye and all the pressure, uh, but having to go from being recognized for the first time as champions to uh, immediately into practice. Uh, exactly. You, you don't get that warm up uh, like the doubles and singles folks might get. Uh, it's showtime right away. Exactly. Um, and, and how do you guys prepare for something like that or, or can you? You know, I don't think we can really prepare. One of the things that, that I'm going to stress this year with them because of the difficulty of the pattern and uh, for and our companion team as well is that we're going to need to know exactly what we want to do once practice finishes um, and, and be ready to go to your shot because you're not going to get a lot of time uh, trying to throw shots during practice that you might be throwing once the lights come on. So you're going to need to be ready to know what you're going to do immediately. And I think that's going to be the key to the success is that the guys that, that are prepared to know that they're not going to get a lot of practice on their shot until the lights come on. Now, you guys certainly have been in the spotlight before, and, and recently you found success in 2012 in Baton Rouge. Uh, a very solid effort there. Right. Um, and you guys did not have a companion team that year. You guys were split for the team event. Right. Uh, how does that change the strategy a little bit, coming in, bowling together with 10 guys out there rather than uh, whoever you get mixed up with? Exactly. Uh, it, it, well, it, it, makes it, a lot, it makes it a lot simpler. It really does. It, it, it also makes it a lot more fun because you have 10 guys with the same goal in mind. And, and they all want to work together to, 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 to put themselves in a position to win. Uh, you know, uh, we're excited about uh, our companion team having an opportunity this year with the scores the way they are. If they, you know, if we all do our jobs, we could finish high together a as a group. And uh, that's that's what I want. That's what I want for them, and uh, and I hopefully it will come true. 
Now, last year, you guys came in knowing that it would take the highest score in history <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, uh, to, to win. And you came out of the gate huge and just kept that going. Uh, almost shot 1,300 in the finale. But how do you stay composed after two big games knowing that you pretty much need to match that effort in game three to right. get there? Well, the, the thing that, the thing that, that, uh, that we, uh, we talked about um, all, all throughout the whole night was whenever we communicated with each other as to the ball changes and the, the line changes, to realize that, that just when it's your time to throw, it's your time up there, just make that shot. Make your shot, do your job, and uh, let the result take care of itself. And then, uh, so the pressure really was, wasn't on us other than just making shots. And that's what I tried to get across was, you know, whether you're throwing it for $10,000 or whether you're throwing it for nothing, you need to be able to do the same thing. And, and that's what I've always worked on in my life is to execute the shot the same way, whether it was for something or nothing. And you guys, of course, all very accomplished players. You know, you have uh, many uh, mega bucks successes. Zeno, mm -hmm. of course, with a 300 here. Right. Uh, Anthony, a, a youngster, but a recent PBA champion as well. Also had a fantastic summer swing last year. Uh, so an up and comer. Um, good diversity on the team, I think, oh, as far as uh, age and experience. And, um, how do you see your role in that team? You're, you're kind of kind of the quiet guy, but uh, <laughs> but what is your role? Well, my my, my role on, my role on the team uh, is the stability, um, the consistency, and knowing you know just like what what's going on this year out here. Uh, you know, we played on the lanes back home. We played on the shot, and it doesn't play anything like that out here. The surface out here plays completely differently. The ice oil makes a huge difference in how the shot plays on this fresh lane surface. And so consequently, my, my job and my role with these guys was to, is to know exactly what we're gonna do and to have an idea of how to, to best attack the lanes. Um, and, you know, and as, there, as, as the one with the most experience, uh, you know, that's, that's something that, that uh, I've just stressed on them is, you know, the calmness under the, the pressure situations. Having been there, done that, um, you know, and they, they, they really, they're thriving on it. They're thriving on it, and they're, they're listening, and that's what's making us successful. Great. Now, this year, again, game plan probably going to be a little bit different. Uh, knowing, looking at the scores, uh, last year it took the highest score ever. Uh, this year, plus 10 will get you into the top 10, and we're already a month into the tournament. Right. Uh, what have you guys been doing specifically to get ready? Uh, you don't have to divulge any strategy or any game right. plan, uh, but what does it take for a for a top 10 team to get ready for this event? Well, I think I think uh, if for those out listening, I mean, if you're coming here to to Reno thinking that that you're going to make a difference in this pattern by not not making good shots by not having your timing right or your, your fundamentals down, uh, then you're sorely mistaken. You're gonna, you're gonna be embarrassed. And so my, my advice to everybody is, is work on bowling on some flat shots to where you, don't, where you have very little margin for error. Because if you don't, you're gonna come out here and you're gonna see your balls, you think you threw a good shot and your ball's gonna miss left. You, you think you threw a good shot and it's gonna miss right because you're not used to hitting your, your, your target. So you need to work on making good shots. And that's what we've been working on, is bowling on tough shots and not bowling on easy shots. Great, we do have a unique opportunity here in 2015, the Showcase Lanes now. Mm -hmm. 10 lanes alongside our main 52 here. And really for the first time, uh, the lanes right next to each other, uh, installed at the same exact time so you've got the exact same brand new lane surface same lane machines same oil same everything that you could possibly need to get the environment just right for a team practice session right uh, is that something that you guys plan to take advantage oh, of oh absolutely absolutely it's uh you know uh, that we will be we will be practicing at one o'clock uh on tuesday before we bowl at five o'clock and that uh we'll get a good idea of how if we need to fine tune our strategy or if our strategy is is dead on, and uh, that's the exciting thing is because it's just down, you know, it's 
150 yards from here. So folks, for those of you at home, the showcase lanes, again, 10 lanes alongside our tournament lanes, and your chance to get your team together, get a pair of lanes for an hour on the exact same lane condition you're going to face at the Open Championships. That's $150 uh, for 10 of you. And divide that up, of course. Uh, and if you have a team of five only, five or less, you can get one lane for $75. And we'll put out the pattern fresh for you, give you a chance to get your strategy and game plan ready, get your equipment set before you head over to the, the big show, as they call it. But uh, Pete, you guys have been here, uh, three of you at least, uh, keeping an eye on things uh, on lanes 39 and 40 here, Motion Plus lanes and Southern Storm. I'm sure you've competed against Brian Brazil oh, and yeah. Jace Peterson uh, at events around the country. Um, again, you guys topped their score uh, for Motion Plus lanes last year. Uh, but what have you seen and learned so far just watching their, their first game and a half? Well, what, I, what I've learned is that if how they're breaking down the lanes has made a huge difference in, in how their ball reaction is. And that's that's what they're, everybody's going to have to realize is, is on this shot, on this 38-foot high-volume pattern, that you can't, you're not going to be able to stay in the same zone the whole time. And, and once your transition hits, you're going to have to be willing to make that transition quickly and not, not hesitate. Uh, and they're, these guys are doing it. They're, they're, they've made their transition. They're starting to see a much better ball reaction now because of the work that they put in in their first game. Well, and we saw that going back to the introduction of the Ice Oil in, in 2013. Uh, a lot of teams were used to making moves at certain points in the team event, uh, working together, and uh, the Ice kind of changed that game a little bit. It delays the transition. Uh, so at least that year for sure, teams were making a move that they thought they needed to, trying to stay ahead of it, mm -hmm. uh, and actually got trapped a little bit um, and either needed to fight it or move back and make that move later. Exactly. Uh, you know, so far we haven't seen a lot of huge games in game number one. Uh, three teams have cracked 1,000, at least out of the top 10. Uh, so 954 and 970, uh, solid starts here. And uh, that would put them ahead of all the other teams in the top 10 four through ten. Right. Yeah, they're going to have to really work hard to get into second place, but they have a chance at it. You know, getting into the lead, they're probably, uh, they probably got too far, too, too big of a hill to climb, but they can move into second. They can move into the top two or three. Well, junior team USA support uh, came out of the gate strong <laughs> with 1070. And improved each game, 1093 and 1196 in the finale. Uh, Eric Vermilia with 279 to get to 3359. Exactly. And uh, we've had a couple close calls this week. Yeah. Hashtag yep. Team Dole, 3231. And Bowling with Leverage Pro Shop. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, also you might be familiar with. Uh, I actually got to watch both of them. And they had 32-11, came up short, 10-48 uh, in game three. They struggled a little bit with that transition. Mm -hmm. uh, it hit for them early in game three. And as soon as they made the move, they finished really strong. Uh, but they were a couple frames behind, and, and admittedly so, when I talked to them after they got right. done. Right. But I think one of, the, one of the, the key things about your group is that, again, there's three of you in the building already. Uh, Zeno is online. He shouted out. Pete here on the chat room, <laughs> uh, but all of you watching very closely, whether it be online or in person, uh, to Absolutely. get an idea. And you spend some time in town, relax, get comfortable, bowl the side events, uh, and come out here and watch these top teams. You, you mentioned you've seen uh, a few of these teams this week. Um, did any of that change what you were thinking already? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it, it, uh, it confirmed for me exactly what I thought in that this surface out here plays completely different than than, it, than any lane surface that I've gotten the bowl on at home because this doesn't have a built-in track. And, and so consequently, this ice oil and the heavy volume, 38 feet's not playing like 38 feet. Uh, so that's really changed how I, I view it. When I came out here, I... I had a game plan in mind and thought, okay, let's see if it works. And the moment I threw my first shots on the stuff out here, I realized that is not the way to approach it. And uh, and these guys have confirmed for me 
watching them today, exactly what I thought is that the the you know I love Chris Barnes, and 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 he's right that I think if this was laid down on some other surface, that there is a built-in look outside, but right now these guys are not able to stay there but more than five frames. And so you have to be willing to, to accept that and move. And, and, and that's changed our strategy. All right, folks, you're listening to Matt Cannizzaro and Pete Thomas. And if there's a top senior event going on anywhere in the country, no doubt Pete will be there. And uh, he was the anchor bowler last year on Artistic Expressions 1 as they took home the regular team title with the highest score in history, 37-20. And there was a lot of chatter. If we would see a 3600 on the tournament lanes last year, and we did not. They said, <laughs> I'll see your 3600 and raise you as they took home the title with 3720. They're the team to beat here in 2015, doing their homework already. And getting ready to hit the lanes on April 14th to put that title on the line. We'll have that live for you on Bowl TV. If you have any questions for Pete uh, or for myself, this is Matt Canizaro. Uh, feel free, drop those in the chat room. And uh, right now we're watching Southern Storm and Motion Plus Lanes. Motion Plus last year's runner-up with 3561 and fifth place the year before at 3499. So uh, if there's certainly a team to watch, this is it. And uh, we're watching a lot of strikes here piling on here in game two. But uh, will they have enough momentum? to get into the top five or even the top ten. And now, Pete, the uh, the party is complete. Jimmy is in the chat room as well. <laughs> so uh, Good. we've got all five guys watching and taking notes, I'm sure. Absolutely. Jimmy, get your tail out here. <laughs> Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy's a good guy. He's got he he's got a job that he that he started not too long after we started last year, and it you know uh, with the way bowling is now, you know you gotta you gotta have a job, and and uh, he's got to support his family, and uh, I'm just giving him a hard time to not being out here right now. All right, now last year you guys uh, almost made it a twofer. Uh, certainly gave Team All Events a run as well. Uh, yeah, we need to blow up lane 43 at the stadium. A little different strategy. You had, uh, had the guys spread out over a couple of squads and really did give it a run going into the last couple of games there. Absolutely. Yeah, we, 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 we should have done it. We just, uh, we just did not uh, bowl well. A couple of us did not carry very well in the doubles and singles. With the lead that we had, there's no reason we shouldn't have won it. Yeah, Those, that, that team bowled phenomenal. They, they won it. But... We had a head start, and, and we just didn't care. And again, it was a, a near record score in team all events. Mm -hmm. uh, and the excitement uh, coming off of that team event, uh, what did you tell your team after that in order to keep them focused to come back next day to have a big day? Well, I didn't say a whole lot uh, to them because they knew what was at stake. And, but the main thing that I, you know, I said is just do, do what you can. You know, because the, the shot in doubles and singles last year was not easy. I mean, it was not easy at all, uh, and uh, you you know we, we did what we could. Uh, hats off to uh, to you know to the guys that won it last year. They did they did a phenomenal job uh, in doubles and singles. And for some reason, you know, I think if Jimmy and 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 uh, Zeno would have been able to bowl with us, we probably would have made a better run at it. But once again, you know, life intercedes. You know, Jimmy had to go home. He had to get back to work, and that's okay. And, you know, we, we, we can live with that. The the number that's up there this year right now, uh, that may not be touched this okay. year in any way, shape, or form. Uh, that is a phenomenal job by Eric Vermeer's team. Uh, they made it look like a house shot in doubles and singles, and that was impressive. Well, the Yon's HI crew came in. They uh, they won Team All Events last year. They've been knocking on the door for a couple of years. Finally got it done, and nearly in record fashion. 10,363 was the number. Uh, their banner hangs over the lanes here at the El Paso Convention Center. Uh, they came in this year, struggled a little bit early, uh, and came up with a big double set, or I'm sorry, a big single set. 
to catapult into, at the time, second place in Team All Events. A very respectable performance. Absolutely. Uh, with all the pressure and all the things going on. Uh, and I'm sure we'll hear from those guys again. But as you mentioned, uh, Eric Vermilia and the crew, Junior Team USA Support won 10,064. <laughs> and that is nearly 700 pins better than previous leader. Absolutely. ND that's, Storm. That's, uh, that's special. Uh, and that really is. That's if we get to that, uh, I'll be, I'll be ecstatic. I'll be I'll be I'll be really ecstatic. But realistically, we're just gonna we're gonna do what we can to 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 try to defend our team title, and then see what we can do from there. Well, it certainly is a marathon again. Team all events is all five all events scores added together, Absolutely. so a 45 game total. Uh, the team event uh, often is a, a sprint, and then the bigger picture, team all events, but I'm sure you guys are focused on not just one event at a time, but probably one shot at a time. Exactly, exactly. You, you get ahead of yourself right now on this thing, and uh, you could be embarrassed. All right, what, right now we're watching two top teams here. They've uh, they both finished as the runners-up here at the Open Championships in the last few years, Motion Plus Lanes last year second place 2013 they were fifth and southern storm made a run in 2011 runner up to jeff riggles and at the time the highest game in tournament history right uh, but right now they are attacking this 38 foot team lane condition if you're curious about that pattern you can see that on bowl.com and we talk about the transition and getting things figured out rich abood yeah for southern storm shot 147 in the opener and now he's he beat it in game, uh, frame five. Yeah, he's already seven <laughs> out of eight here in game number two. So things can change that quickly. And it's just staying on top of those moves and those changes. And uh, it gets tricky. And you only get one shot at it. Exactly. That's what makes it so special to win an eagle. You know, team eagle like that is that you only get one shot at it. And you got 7,000 other teams coming out here trying to do what you're doing and uh, so that, that's what makes it special to win it because well, you know you've done something incredible when you do communication certainly a very important part of the team atmosphere and team events uh, a lot of talking goes on I'm sure mm -hmm. um, I'm sure last year a little bit of trying to keep everybody calm and focused great shot there by Brazil <laughs> on the washout <laughs> yeah typical Brazil get the ball shot off the wash out he's funny he's a good guy I like Brian but, uh, as you guys are out there in the in the city area and you're watching shots go down the lane uh, you know what, what are you looking for what are you what are you trying to see and, and how do you communicate that to your teammates uh, as far as uh, what what you see compared to what they see and what move might be necessary or is that something that maybe you predetermine uh, before you even get out to the lanes well, like last year, I mean, I, can, I could only really, you know, I mean, I can give you a little insight into what we did last year was the way that the shot broke down last year, we, we knew that there was a built-in reaction from the moment we stepped up because of the way that the balls were reading in practice. Uh, and so we stayed away from screwing up or make, messing up the, the shot inside and so whenever we saw the ball reaction we knew that if we got the guys with hands if they could just get the ball going right towards the brown board uh, down the lane the 40 foot marker that they would have success and so our talk was you know once they got away from in the first game the ball reaction the, where it pushed down and recovered nicely and then all of a sudden you had early hook we started talking about, hey, you need to get inside a little bit deeper, open up the shot, and, and, and throw it to the brown board. And, and so that the communication was once the, the ball started wiggling on them, then it was time to move. It was time to change to something stronger, go in deeper, and get the ball around the corner. And on this stuff, the communication is going to have to be probably a little quicker because the, there is no built-in reaction. So you don't have a real shape that you can look at. So once you, once you see your ball do something stupid, you're going to have to be willing to maybe make that five and two move or that 
that arrow move left and not not and not think that you you're making a bad move when you do it and then trust it the key is to trust what you see and what your teammates say well right now we're seeing rich abood absolutely striking at will here on He's lane the band. 40 and uh, strikes piling on so we're gonna have to give him a hundred 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 above yeah. award patch or something for what he's done so we've seen a, a lot of increase in our in our top 10 here from game one to game two uh, coach K scholarship just last night as a matter of fact Steve Klumpkin David Haynes and crew, mm -hmm. uh, they started with 952, <laughs> followed it up with 1151. Yeah, awesome. I watched that. That was hilarious. That was amazing. So we didn't get a chance to hear from them to uh, to see what happened there or what the, what the strategy was or how things opened up. Well, I got to watch it. I watched it. And um, uh, I, I'll, just, I'll just say this about it. Uh, Steve Pompkin is probably one of the, one of the premier players execution wise in, in our sport. Uh, he, he he can hit his target and he can he and he knows ball reactions. He knows bowling balls better than anybody uh, around. And he started off with 154. Uh, something changed when he shot 249 the next game. And you just have to you'd have to ask him what he did different, but I, I got to watch it and, and it was playing the lanes properly from that point on. And uh, I think they'd made the move too late. They dug themselves too deep a hole. And they were fighting up a, a huge hill uh, with a 950 start. You got to get off to a good start on this. If you don't shoot over 1,000 on this or close to 1,000, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to move into the top three or four. But you need to, you need to shoot at least 1,000 to get off to a good start. Folks, you're hearing from the expert here, Pete Thomas, member of last year's record-setting team champions here at the. Yeah, yeah. The Open guys are really starting to go. Motion Plus, they they they're they're starting to make their their move. Their ball reaction is looking a million times better than it did in the first game. So all that work they put in, if you've been watching, all that work they put in to start off with is starting to pay off. These guys are familiar with the big scores and the big finishes had a nice finished in 2013 to get up to fifth place. And the question here as John Sosa rolls the 10. He throws it good, doesn't he? Got it. Sosa, a bit of a legend here at the Open Championships with three Eagles and the first player with two 800s on the championship lane. So these guys have they've been around a little bit. Absolutely. And they got lots of experience. And they got some youth mixed in with, with young Pearson. Ah, flat 10 there. But these guys also have done the, uh, the companion team shuffle a little bit over the years. Uh, but I think, uh, again, a good, a good diverse group of uh, experience and some of the straighter players and some of the the booming youngsters uh, all playing together, I think it certainly helps it out. We saw that with Bermelia and his group. Mm -hmm. uh, they had three lefties mixed in, and uh, the companion team was all women. Uh, so they <laughs> tend to play the lanes a little bit differently, uh, yep. and all part of the strategy, and clearly that uh, that has paid off. Absolutely. They, uh, they, they set a standard that's going to be tough to catch, and it can be, it can be caught but you're going to have to work together. You're going to have to work together to do it. That's, that's, that's the key. If you don't work together, it ain't going to happen. So here we are getting ready, uh, wrapping up the ninth frame here. And then the big tenth, a lot of pins out there in the tenth frame certainly could make or break the chances here. But motion plus lanes, 977 in the opener, definitely in position. Yeah, if they can strike out, they can they can set themselves up for a move towards that second place easily.
So Bears wraps things up there in the ninth. Nipke off and running in the tenth. And uh, he got the first hit, doubled up. That was a good shot, bad break. A little shaker seven. You gotta carry that if you're gonna score big. Definitely gotta mix in a couple breaks along the way. And uh, for Junior Team USA, and there was a lot of nine pins and a few <laughs> four nines in doubles and singles. I bet Rich wishes he would have started some other place than where he did right now. <laughs> He's, uh, he's making this look like a house shot <laughs> now. That's one of the things about strategy too, though, that you gotta, you gotta be flexible sometimes. You need to, you need to realize that the, what the experts say isn't always what works. You know, that's, that's the thing. I mean, it, I, like I said, Chris, these guys, if, if this was laid down somewhere else, I think he was so dead on in how this shot would play. But it, as he was, if he's watching right now, he'd probably realize there's, it's not playing like not playing like that. Well, we, we talk about strategy a little bit, and uh, you know we've seen it in recent years, and definitely in 2012 with our Team All Events winner, SMB Pro Shop, uh, Nick Wissinger started with a 169. <laughs> and, uh, you know, all playing into their team strategy. And it paid off, of course, for the big picture as uh, he went on to uh, shoot 2,100 almost. Um, you know, almost winning the all events title even uh, after making a move there in game two. Right. And, but all that in the beginning helped him get to the number that brought home that title. Uh, and, of course, last year's uh, anomaly, Lewis Jenkins Jr., <laughs> 520 in doubles, didn't yeah. move, didn't change balls, and it just came to him. And she's 826 to win the singles title. Um, Lewis bowls in a, in a league that Jimmy and I bowl in on Monday nights in Shawnee, Fire Lake. He's a, he's a really nice guy, talented. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Well, and uh, you know, when we, we did the interview after the fact, and I was expecting him to say, you know, I moved you know, three arrows left, and I changed balls completely, and, and it was, I just stayed where I was, and it just, it just happened. And we're seeing some things happen here for Southern Storm and Motion Plus Lanes. Rich Abood, 147 in the opener, 278 here in game two. <laughs> that's a, that's a comeback. That's what you call a good. He about doubled his score. Jeff Nimke improves from 197 to 206. Chris Pearson with a string here yeah. through the 10th. You get to 248. Yeah. So Pearson 192, 248. So a big game two here. Chad Kloss grabbing that right arm. I tell you, you what, he's a trooper, he? he is a trooper. So battling a bicep tendon injury. Last year it was Nimke with the, the back issue. Uh, again, these guys, if they're all healthy one year, they're going to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Problem is they're not getting younger. Chad said he bowled well at state tournament and felt good coming in, uh, as good as he could, of course. Uh, but I believe surgery might be on the horizon. So we could see a brand new Chad Kloss in 2016 at the National Bowling Stadium. Well, you know, Ted Pritz on our team blew out his bicep uh, at a turn several years ago, and he came back fine. So it, it, he can't come back from it. That's for sure. And, uh, all that makes the story better. When, uh, when in fact it does happen, and of course last year uh, you guys made headlines shooting 37-20, the highest score in history, taking home those Eagles. And just a few days from now, you're going to turn around and see that orange eagle next to your name on the scoreboard for the very first time. Yeah, that's going to be cool.
certainly no shortage of celebrities uh, in the audience today watching these guys and and why not top five finishes in back-to-back -back years uh, if you're going to be in town and, and ready to take notes this is the place to be right now yeah they're making their run they definitely are they survived the first game and we're going to put up a number here to give them give them a chance Good shot by Chad. Well, Aaron Smith not here today. He's in Reno for the opening of the women's championships. So uh, I'm the guy with the pen and calculator now, uh, tallying <laughs> things up for you. And we'll have those numbers at the conclusion of the game two. We'll know exactly what they need if they're going to make a push here. And uh, looking for their third consecutive top five finish, motion plus lanes. That's impressive right there. For sure. And we got we got we got a team that that, that it's a, it's just a fun to bowl with. These guys our guys are a lot of fun to bowl with and that's that's what makes it that's what makes it enjoyable. If you're gonna travel across the country, at least you wanna enjoy yourself. Chad Moss with the big double there in the tenth, and he's kind of been the heart of this team. Him and Kloss, uh, you know, some some personnel changes uh, in recent years because of PBA exemptions, different things. Barris was out for a minute, Kloss was out another time, uh, but certainly with the addition of Chris Pearson not too long ago, uh, coming out of juniors, uh, and of course Nimke with two wins to his credit, uh, they really have built a powerhouse team here, and uh, we're seeing them together, uh, possibly indefinitely uh, you know the last two years very strong and uh, only getting more and more comfortable on the lanes together they definitely did panic that's the that's the thing they didn't say oh no 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 we're not doing things right you know they didn't panic they're, that's the, that's their experience they're starting to make their move They've done this long enough and had enough success at various levels of the game to, to know. Uh, you know. A lot of teams will come in with a strategy and the minute they throw a shot in practice and the ball doesn't hook, uh, it's abandoned and every man for himself. But uh, if you have a game plan coming in, you gotta ride it out. Uh, you know, you kinda know when it's time to, to go to plan B, but sometimes you just have to wait for things to develop and they certainly have done that. 977 start, not a bad start, but uh, a huge game two right here. And uh, we'll see them make their move. Game three coming up in just a minute. guys still talking through it they, uh, they watched Barris throw that first shot on lane 40 and uh, now a little huddle as yeah. they get ready for game three the the transition we saw the other night with the bowling with leverage pro shop folks and uh, they caught him there early in game three and uh, they recovered nicely but it gave a little too much away early yeah that's uh it's going to be interesting to see if they if they're, if they're going to continue to migrate to the middle of the lane. This team kind of chose, when you if you watched them from the start, they kind of chose that they're going to play straight lines for the most part. And that's, uh, you know, they, they made their bet. And it, it seems to be paying off for them right now. Um, and hopefully they'll uh, see the reaction and make the right moves. And another 11.51. That's huge. So they need another 1100, 11.06 to move into the 
four to move into second place. Well, 12-31 will get them to the top spot. Right. Yeah, they still got to shoot. They got to shoot a big 12. But that team, we've seen the, a team already shot 12-25 in the last game to get to 31-49, right? So 12-31 with this team might not be unreasonable. Well, they've, they've shot the big numbers before. Absolutely. And uh, certainly capable. Lanes are working in their favor right now, but you are correct. 11.03 will get them into second place and certainly be a nice head start for Team All events tomorrow. But uh, they're, I'm sure, very focused on that top spot right now. 33.59, Junior Team USA support. Well, if, they, if they get there, it's going it, to... Hopefully, Nimke uh, has made uh, the right choice. All right, Pete, well, I know you got some teammates in the building and you guys uh, want to do some talking and uh, we appreciate you joining us, talking a little bit of strategy and uh, the excitement coming up April 14th, the defending champs back on the lanes, Artistic Expressions 1 looking to make it two in a row here. 37-20 to take home the win last year and uh, going to go watch game three. We appreciate you joining us and any last parting words for the Bull TV audience? Well, I just want to thank you, Matt, for letting me, let me come on and... and uh and uh, and talk with you guys and, and just just let you know that, you know guys uh, it's not easy here it's not easy uh, but you can have success if you prepare and you work together all right folks teamwork the key to success here at the open championships that is pete thomas anchor bowler for artistic expressions one thanks pete for joining us and we'll see more from pete and his team in the coming days we'll have them live on bowl tv on April 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern as they put their title on the line. So we'll turn our attention now back to Southern Storm and Motion Plus Lanes. Motion Plus needing a huge game three here to make a push. 9.77 and 11.51. They'll need 12.31 to get to the top spot, 11.03. We'll get him into second. But uh, definitely every pin very important as they try to track down the ginormous 10,064 put up by Junior Team USA support in Team All events. So we do thank everybody for dropping by. Big crowd online tonight. This is Matt Kenazar, recently joined by Pete Thomas. Aaron Smith on the road at the opening of the Women's Championships. We'll have a recap for you about that on Bowl.com later tonight. But right now, game three of today's team event. I am behind lanes 39 and 40 here at the El Paso Convention Center. And uh, some confused looks from the Motion Plus lanes guys. So far, three bowlers and no strikes on that right lane. Familiar names in the chat room. Jeff Ussery. We'll see him on Bull TV in June, part of the Lodge Lanes group. Great success last year. Made a run at the top spot as well. Uh, curious what pair Junior Team USA support was on for team. And Jeff, if I remember correctly, it was uh, down in the 20s, 25 and 6 maybe. We had a small squad that night uh, for the holiday weekend.
But uh, while we settle in for game three, quick rundown of tonight's scores for Southern Storm, Rich Abood. Big turnaround, 147, 278. Jace Peterson, 209, 142. Brian Brazo, 206, 186. John Sosa, 178, 217. Dennis Rakoskis, 194 and 201 for games of 954 and 1024. Again, coming into this team event, 10th place, 3,010, plus 10 to crack the top 10. So if you can get to that plus number, you're going to get a nice payday here at the 2015 USBC Open Championships. And for motion plus lanes, Jeff Nimke back to 100%. Back injury, a distant memory, 197-206. Chris Pearson, former Junior Team USA member, 192-248. Chad Kloss, former exempt player on the PBA Tour, 188-234. Nursing and arm injury, it did not show in game number two. The big guy, Chad Moss, 212-236. Holding steady for Motion Plus lanes. And in the anchor spot, Dave Barris, former Regional Player of the Year and exempt player on the PBA Tour. 188, 227. 977, 1151. That's your recap. You're all caught up. are curious about this team lane condition you can visit bowl.com slash open champ click on the lane conditions tab and it will tell you all about this 38 foot team pattern and the 39 foot doubles and singles pattern those of you headed to El Paso have an opportunity to see both patterns on the exact same lanes for the team pattern you and your teammates can get a one hour practice session on the showcase lanes give you a chance to develop your own game plan and strategy and if you'd like to see the doubles and singles pattern you can compete in the bowlers journal championships presented by usbc a side event being held literally alongside the open championships showcase lanes 10 lanes down at the low end of the center 52 lanes for the main event and the bowlers journal Features the doubles and singles lane condition. Squat times throughout the day. Also posted on bowl.com. A, a lot of teams finding success here by taking advantage of those opportunities. Certainly uh, terrific to have those things on site. The only way to simulate this exact environment you're pulling under the same bright lights and high ceilings on lanes installed at the exact same time as our championship lane. So check that out. More information available on bowl.com. We do have just one 300 game at this year's event. Chad Oaks from Minnesota started singles with 17 consecutive strikes. Logged the lone perfect game on the way to a 772 series. That's actually the highest overall event of this year's tournament. Had a couple 760s in team including all events leader Eric Vermilia on his way to a 2083 effort. And you can find recaps of all of those items and the leaderboards on bowl.com. So appreciate everybody joining us. Thought I was going solo, but uh, Pete Thomas, one of our defending champions in the team event, nice enough to come on and Give some expert analysis on this squad. We also have 2009 USBC Masters champ John Nolan 
His team over on 27-28. Started tonight with 8.98 and 9.49. A little bit hard to see from here. Uh, again, we are behind lanes 39 and 40. Uh, 52 sprawling lanes here at the El Paso Convention Center. Uh, and I don't see another 1,000 anywhere on the scoreboards. Uh, these gentlemen, Motion Plus Lanes and Southern Storm, garnering a lot of attention here. Whether they're bowling on the next squad or in the next couple days. Standing room only. This is game three of three. Motion Plus needs 12.31 to find its way back into the top spot. Eleven oh three gets him into second. And more than likely headed into the top 10. Right now. 10th place, 3,010. Whatever strategy these gentlemen had in practice and in game one, paying off with a big game two. They will fight through whatever transition we've seen here early in game three. See if they can finish strong. Biggest finish of the year, Nindy Storm. And the 10 goes for Brazil. His first strike here in game three. He's got games of 206 and 186.
So Motion Plus definitely going to need a little momentum here as we get close to the halfway point in game three. 12 31, a tall order to get to the top spot. 33 59, top of the standings. But 11 03, enough to get them into second place. 32 31. We saw three of our top four teams this week. Maybe it's the weather. But team scores definitely on the rise here in mid-April. It's probably good news for our defending champs. We'll see them April 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Very next day, former Team USA member Derek Oaf and his talented group of former Nebraska Cornhuskers on the lanes for doubles and singles on the 15th at 3 p.m. Eastern.
do appreciate everybody stopping by and giving us part of your Friday night. This is Matt Canazaro live from the 2015 USBC Open Championships. We're at the El Paso Convention Center in El Paso, Texas, watching two top teams go at it here on lanes 39 and 40. And trying to make a run at the top 10. Both of them in good position to do so. See if we can get some momentum on the back half of game number three. If you miss any of today's broadcast, you can stop by Bull TV anytime and check out one of our archived broadcasts. Watch the rest of this one or any of our others from this year at the Open Championships. If you're curious about what's coming up, we've got one April 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern and one the very next day, April 15th at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can find that schedule on bull.com slash livestream or go to the Open Championships page bull.com slash open champ click on the information tab and you'll find the live stream schedule along with some other great information These gentlemen will be back on the lanes tomorrow at 1 p.m. local time, 3 p.m. Eastern. If you want to follow along on xbowling.com or on our webcams, they're going to certainly have a lot of work to do if they're going to chase down that 10,000 number shot by Junior Team USA support for Team All Events. But they've been there before. Chad Moss and crew have hit that milestone. And looking to get everything they can towards that goal here in the final game of the team event. Again, 33-59, the number on top, 10,064 is leading team all events. Six more games tomorrow beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. Halfway through game number three, Southern Storm perfect in frame number five. Working on a team six bagger.
All the details about this year's USBC Open Championships can be found on bowl.com. Bowl.com slash Open Champ. A lot of great information. You can also follow along on the official USBC Open and Women's Championships Facebook page. All the news that's not quite news gets posted there along with some behind the scenes details and information. You can also find us personally on Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, Matt Canizaro USBC, and on Twitter, at USBC Matt and at USBC Aaron. So feel free to reach out, say hello if you're headed this way. Definitely stop by the office and say hi. All right, here's Rich Abood stepping up on lane 39. Had a bit of a slow start at 147, but came back huge, 278. And now he's looking for four in a row here in game number three. Goes high, leaves the 3-6. Rich making all the right moves after the opener. Nice break for Nimke to get the six to go. He was working on four in a row as well. That run comes to an end with the four seven. Thank you. 
Mr. Nimke spares up. Chris Pearson looking to get things going here. And he goes light, leaves the two pin. So these guys caught up in a little something here. Again, 1231, the number to get to the top spot. 1103 will get him into second. All right, folks, another uh, another guest in the booth. And we have USBC National Board Member Carl Kielich, a El Paso resident and a big part of the Open Championships coming here in 2015. Of course, the Women's Championships here back in 2010. And Carl, we're just watching uh, two of these top teams battle it out here trying to get into the top 10 here at the Open Championships and uh, I've seen you watching pretty closely uh, for the, the last little while uh, and of course spending a lot of time here inside the venue again uh, welcome back well, thanks Matt it's uh, great to be here again and watch these great bowlers a lot of fun well you got the chance to see this event uh, come to fruition and of course all the way back from the initial bid process and now seeing the lanes get built took 64 days to put this venue together uh, and now the tide of many thousands of bowlers headed to your hometown here uh, what's it like to see all this come together it, it's been absolutely phenomenal uh, to see the city embrace this uh, you know, even back in with 2010 you know initially when the ladies were here the city wasn't real sure what this meant and we weren't even two months into the ladies' championship, and the city was just all over uh, putting in another bid and, and having this opportunity. And, and to see what uh, USBC's done in building this facility out, it, um, it, it, it's absolutely beautiful inside the facility. Uh, the city of El Paso has really, literally laid out the red carpet for the bowlers. Um, we're hearing great things, uh, and you know, now with the Chihuahuas opening up next door last night, uh, just that much more stuff to welcome the bowlers to El Paso and have a great time. Well, the city got kind of a, a child version, a, a test run in 2010, a uh, little bit smaller scale, the women's championships. Uh, but now the big show comes to town, and uh, we certainly are seeing that. Everywhere we go in town, uh, everybody knows about the bowlers, and uh, there's welcome bowler signs in businesses uh, all around town. and on all the flag poles and light poles and just uh, everywhere uh, very welcoming and uh, I think both the city and the event uh, learned a lot back in 2010 about what it takes to uh, have the bowlers come to town from the airports to the hotels to the restaurants and you mentioned the El Paso Chihuahuas the stadium was not even here in 2010 a recent addition uh, they're in just their second season now but uh, for any bowler who says there's nothing to do in El Paso. I beg to differ. With, uh, even within walking distance, so many great shops and souvenir opportunities. Of course, uh, delicious food uh, in across El Paso and uh, and in the downtown area. And now a baseball stadium with AAA baseball team right next door. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, like I said, it's our second year of existence with with the Chihuahuas. It's the uh, AAA Farm Club for the Padres. And depending on when the you know, bowlers are coming to town, we, we've got the two uh, Broadway-style theaters here, one of them literally in the, the complex here at the convention center and then the historic plaza theater. 
about two blocks away uh, uh, for those coming in in May. You've got the Broadway show Wicked and you know a lot of other stuff going on. So definitely check out the schedule. There's, there'll be a lot to offer right here in the downtown area for everybody. All right, now Carl, you've been here for uh, a lot of great moments at this year's event, and it's only one month in. We kicked off March 7th, and we're going all the way till July 12th. 128 days of competition, but uh, you got to see opening ceremonies in person, the ribbon cutting, uh, some great entertainment, then of course a very emotional day with Sylvester Thiel celebrating 70 years on the championship lanes. We got a great video of that with 200,000 hits uh, on our Open and Women's Facebook page. Uh, you got to present his award to him, and of course, uh, just recently watching Bill Lillard, USBC Hall of Famer, break the career pinfall record here at the Open Championships uh, with a strike, of course, and uh, a very special trophy and presentation for him. Uh, but what does it mean to you as a as a lifelong bowler and a bowling fan, and uh, in your role with USBC to to be a part of moments like that here at the the world's largest participatory sporting event? Well, the, the history of this event uh, is what makes this event uh, so special. You know, 112 years of history, and I've tried to study a little bit of the history of it, and, and to be able to see and, and just be in the building when, when Sill made his 70th trip down there and being only the third bowler to, to accomplish that. And I, I wish him the best next year in, in tying the record. Um, and then, you know, Mr. Lillard, um, I mean, the consummate professional, uh, absolutely a class act. Um, you know, I, I never got a chance to meet Mr. Norris, um, but I heard a lot about him and, and just sit there and, and watch Mr. Lillard pay tribute to him in the way he did, you know, just help bring it all together and just being able to be a part of it, uh, you know, being able to witness it firsthand and, and all the moments and watching the champions return um, I mean I got you know, I got to witch, witness one champion return in the past but to hear to sit here and watch them all and and, you know, and Pete Thomas in the building and a good friend of mine Zeno will be here next week and it's it's so much fun um, and, and you know know what, the, what everybody goes through to, to reach and, and when they go on their eagle hunt and accomplish it um, you know it, it's just been amazing and, and just you know, having the opportunity that Mr. Hagen's given me to be able to help with the presentations has obviously made it just some lifelong memories for me. Well, no doubt, uh, many thousands of bowlers headed our way, and for different reasons, of course. We mentioned some of our participation awards. Uh, some folks are going to come out here. They're, they're probably not going to win, but uh, there's some uh, terrific participation recognition. A lot of guys chasing down that 25-year plaque. Uh, and with the prize fund nearing five million dollars, uh, a good opportunity to take home a little piece of that. Uh, about 47% of our bowlers or so uh, will take home some sort of prize money. So a, a pretty good amount of the folks will get a piece of the pie. You know, whether it's a, a few dollars in one event or uh, big money in other events. Uh, you know, and for some, just the opportunity to hit that loaded cash number, very meaningful. And in this case, a chance to see a city that we've never, ever seen. El Paso, Texas, we've never been here in 112 years. Uh, the first time, that's going to be pretty special for the city and for you guys to make that happen. No, it, it absolutely is. And, and, you know, being able to travel to different cities, and, and especially when we travel to new cities, you know, the, uh, this is my 14th year this year. That's something that's always makes it fun is being able to experience the culture and, and the different... Uh, entertainment venues that the different cities have to offer um, you know in, in a lot of our a lot of the best memories I've got aren't necessarily in the bowling center uh, they're, they're outside it's, you know going out with a team hanging out somewhere or, or just go visiting you know like Baton Rouge we spent you know a couple nights in the French Quarter with my wife and, and experienced a couple of plantations so, I mean, every city's got a lot to offer. You know, here in El Paso, you know, a couple hour drive away, you've got some things that you can't experience anywhere else in the country, such as Carlsbad Caverns and, and White Sands Missile Range, or White Sands National Monument. So, you know, definitely, it, it's one of the great things about this, this event. And those are the things that we do here often, especially uh, this week, for example, from our, our first 50-year gentleman, uh, Benton Dempsey, talking about 
uh, how things were back in the day. 1961, his debut. Uh, travel, of course, was a lot different and the opportunity to, to see the country in different ways. Uh, but again, chances are 40 years from now, you're going to forget what scores you bowled or how much prize money you got. Uh, but you're going to remember the things that happened not only on the lanes but off the lanes and, and where they happened. It's amazing talking to these guys and how they can, you know, recollect just certain instances from so many years ago with such detail. Um, and that's what really makes it special. It's a lifetime of experiences. Uh, and again, maybe not trophies for everybody, but uh, mental trophies, I guess, in a way. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but the gentlemen we're here to see today, they are here to chase down those Eagles. And they came very close in 2013, finished fifth with 34.99, came back in 2014. And for a brief moment in time, owned the highest team series in tournament history, 35-61, went on to finish second, of course. You mentioned Pete Thomas, Zeno Garcia, and the guys. 37-20 uh, to take home that title. Uh, but the Motion Plus team, definitely a little bit of unfinished business, uh, as well as Southern Storm. They finished second in 2011. Uh, but uh, what brought you out here today? Well, we're actually at the Showcase Lanes getting some team practice in. Uh, you know, with it being in El Paso, we're definitely going to take advantage of, of having that here. But also to come down and, and watch some of the better teams and, and try to learn something. Uh, you know, got most of our team here, and you know, we we're just trying to get down and learn what we can. We you know, we we're a couple months away, and you know, we we want to have as much success as possible, like it, like anybody else does. Um, Hopefully a little built-in advantage being able to come down and get an education. Well, you certainly picked a, a good day and two terrific teams to watch. Uh, a lot of experience uh, individually and uh, and at this event. Uh, three Eagles up on the scoreboard. Uh, we just saw Chad Kloss throw a shot there on lane 40. Former PBA exempt player uh, nursing an injury. But uh, these guys, again, if they can all be healthy in one year, um, you know, if they're that close with uh, some different injuries and things, you can imagine... Uh, when they're all strong and ready to go. No, absolutely. This is this is definitely a team that, that understands the lane play and, and lane maintenance, as you were. Um, you know, they they understand what what the, the modern team bowling concept is all about. And yeah, there there's an eagle definitely in their future. Uh, they just in one year they're gonna they're gonna put it together and and hold on to that lead. You know, la last year. They probably would have had it, and it, you know, you gotta give Pete and team just absolute credit for putting up that number that they did last year. It was just absolutely amazing. Well, this 39-foot pattern uh, certainly proving to be very challenging here in 2015, and uh, right now being plus 10, just over 3,000 will get you into the top 10. Uh, these guys well on their way. Uh, both teams having a, a, a decent day. They're not going to get to the top spot. 33.59 is a, a bit of a monster put up by a junior team USA support. Uh, we've seen some close calls this week, so it's certainly reachable. Um, and every pin will be uh, just a little bit of a head start towards that huge 10,000 number in team all events. I think uh, if anything is, I don't want to say untouchable at this point because we've seen a lot happen. Uh, we thought in 2009 that Ron Vokes' 23.21 was untouchable uh, and it lasted one year. Right. Uh, before Matt McNeil came in. So uh, nothing is impossible. But uh, certainly that 10,064, a big hill to climb for any team coming in. No, it definitely is. It's, you know, it's the, the patterns this year, it's, it's, it's really easy to give up a few sticks here and there. And patience is an absolute must. And that is the one thing that, you know, I've seen for several years now it is a lot of teams struggle with. They, they, they find it hard to be patient for whatever reason. Um, and this year, more so than any, I think you've got to be absolutely patient with what you're doing and, and make sure you're leaving makeable spares and get those spares. And then when the lane starts to give it to you, you got to take advantage um, and, and, and then catch the transition fast. Well, especially when the, when the scores are big like they were in 2014, for sure, you, uh, you don't have a lot of room. So uh, it's easy to panic, uh, maybe abandon the strategy a little bit. Uh, but you mentioned patience, of course, uh, you know, these guys we're watching right now, they were patient through game number one and kind of broke out in game two. And now they're battling some of that transition you mentioned here in game three. 
Yeah, I was down here earlier, and I mean, on games, uh, you know, basically frames three through five, you know, they just all seem to start getting a little bit of a bad reaction, and you know, and it, it took them a few frames to feel it out, and that, you know, even to some extent, uh, they're they're still fighting a little bit. It, you know, they may have. I didn't get to watch very early, but you know, they may not have developed quite what they wanted to see. Um, they were close, but you know, now when they've had to move in, they're you know they're they're just not clearing the fronts like they would like to, I think, and you know, seeing a lot of flat hits here. Well, Rich Abood for Southern Storm likes what he sees. Started with 147, but backed that up with 278, and now he's trying to get back in the 230s here in Game Three. And a nice shot there for that the nice. three bagger. So nice comeback for him again, staying patient as you mentioned, and looking past that 147 start, and he's going to have a a nice team event here. Yeah, definitely. And it's you know, with bowling, you know, you never give up. You know, always continue to battle. You know, you can always recover for some, you know, from bad starts, and, and make it back up. You know, and, and when you're bowling in that team environment, you've got to do that for for your other guys. You know, and you know, whatever side action you may have gotten into, you got you got to put it out of your mind and and you know, and battle it back. And that's what the best teams out here do. You know, they they always come back and and work together as a team and figure it out. Very nice 235 for Rich. Well, if he did put that side action out of his mind, he could start thinking about some reverse brackets right now. With a 235 Absolutely. finish, 278 in the middle. For a 660 set. So 660 the hard way, but uh, certainly on this challenging lane condition, uh, a solid effort for Mr. Abood. Absolutely. And, uh, Mr. Vermilia checking in in the chat room. I uh, said not to jinx it. And some, <laughs> some great bowling, but now, of course, Mr. Vermilia, the fun part, uh, even more fun when you hold on to win, as you guys learned. Uh, the weight, the leaderboard watch. These Motion Plus guys experienced that last year, taking the lead, only to uh, to fall to second place before it was all done. Yeah, I can only imagine what it's like to sit there and watch a leaderboard. I remember my teammate Bobby Stives in 2006 daily asking me where things were at, and and then when you finally gave him that phone call, the <laughs> the elation, and the, the phone call I got not five minutes later. <laughs> Well, Bobby Stives, one of two local champions at the Open Championships. He, uh, he won doubles back in 2006, not too far away in Corpus Christi. And, of course, the other, Roy Daniels, uh, all events in 2000. So yep. also not too far away. That was in Albuquerque. Well, not too far away in Texas is a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> 13 hours away. <laughs> He's, he's actually over here trying to get an education also. Well, you guys certainly want to perform in front of the hometown crowd. That'll be fun to, to be able to do that and with, with families, with all of our families present for, for the first time. So we're watching our final shot here from Chad Kloss, the nine pin. And no doubt he'll finish a painful team event with a 196. Chad nursing a bicep tendon injury. Yeah, you can tell he wasn't real comfortable in his execution, but he finished pretty strong there. Six more games to go tomorrow. And, you know, he's a champion. He'll figure it out. If you missed any of today's broadcast or you'd like to check out a previous broadcast including Junior Team USA supports run to the top of the leaderboards, you can find all of that and more on Bowl TV. And remember to subscribe so that you won't be left out next time we kick off 
another great bowling event, whether it's here at the Open Championships or around the world. Lucas Wiseman getting ready to hit the road, uh, along with Aaron Smith for some collegiate action later this month. And then the USBC Queens right around the corner in May. So uh, we'll have a lot for you here on Bowl TV, including many, many more broadcasts from here in El Paso and the USBC Women's Championships in Reno, which kicks off today. Opening ceremonies uh, should be underway already, uh, if not done with the first squad on the lanes. Nice shot from Chad Moss. Got himself a nice little place to be there. Motion plus right now, climbing the leaderboard. Already into the top five. And just trying to get in good position for tomorrow's doubles and singles. They'll be back on the lanes at 3 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. here in El Paso. So anybody out there want to come and watch or check it out on the webcams. They'll be here and we'll be ready for whatever they have in store for us this year. shot there by Sosha. Again, the first bowler to have two 800s here at the Open Championships. Got three eagles to his credit. Most recent regular doubles in 2008. He is what, team event away from basically the sweep? He's got a double singles and all of them. Is that correct? Uh, John has uh, double singles and team. Team, okay. uh, team was in 1998 with Jeff Nimke. At 847 to take home that singles title in 1997. Big, big number for a long time. The highest score in tournament history. Barris can double up in a tenth here. shot. The Wizard of Waukesha is his nickname, Dave Bears. Finishing things up here for Motion Plus Lanes. They're going to be just shy of fourth place it looks like. Yeah, 3172 with a fell ball here. Current leader, 33-59, followed by 32-31, 32-11, and 31-78. And we saw two through four this week. So uh, a good scoring week here in El Paso. 218 for Bears. Very solid. Another great run by the Motion Plus team. Great score on a challenging 39-foot lane condition. That puts them in fifth place. And we'll see if we can't get a photo of those guys. Have it ready for tomorrow. Should they make a run? Again, they'll be back on the lanes at 1 p.m. local time, 3 p.m. Eastern. We we'll have a final recap for you here in a minute. Carl, thanks for joining us. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for the invite. I'm sure we'll see you again, and uh, good luck on those practice lanes, and we'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. I'll be hanging around Tuesday, too. So Dennis Rakoskis is going to finish things up here for Southern Storm. 
to 28. So two top 10 scores here today for Southern Storm and Motion Plus Lanes. We'll start from the top. Southern Storm, Rich Abood finishes with 278 and 235 for 660 leading the way. Jace Peterson, 566. Brian Brazil, 596. John Socia, 572. And Dennis Rakoska, 623 for 3037. That would be good for seventh place, except they were topped by Motion Plus Lanes. Last year's runner up, Jeff Nimke, 629. Chris Pearson, 6'10", Chad Kloss, 6'18", Chad Moss, 6'79", to lead the way, and Dave Bear, 6'33", for 31'69", which is good for fifth place. That drops Southern Storm down to eighth, but two top ten efforts here. You can't ask for a better Bowl TV broadcast. We knew that coming in to contenders who, uh, who have potential every time they step on the lanes here at the Open Championships. They did not disappoint. Thanks for joining us, folks. Again, this is Matt Canizaro. And for today's special guest, Pete Thomas and Carl Keelick, USBC board member, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll be back on the air on April 14th with our defending team champion, Artistic Expressions. And that is going to do it from the El Paso Convention Center today. Thanks for giving us a part of your Friday. That's the news for now. And we'll see you on the lanes.